Welcome Spraylock Nation to another glorious video, Tailgate Talks. Today we got Brett Howell here. He's with Spraylock Concrete Protection Technical Department. He's got a background where he's went through the CIM program at Murfreesboro and worked for a cement manufacturing company. Brett, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your background and what you've done in the past. Sure, so as Josh mentioned, uh, I went to MTSU and uh, did the CIM program there. Uh, since then, I've spent time in the ready mix industry, uh, concrete paving and flat work, and as he mentioned as well, the cement manufacturing as a technical representative. So today, since you got the background in cement, I was wanting to know a, a little history of cement. You know, we know cement's been around for 10, 12,000 years or so, but a lot of people don't know where it came from and what the revolutions that, that proceeded to their modern day uh, cement. And I know for the most part, you got two major categories, if you will non-hydraulic and hydraulic cement. Can you tell us a little bit about it and the history of cement? Sure, so hydraulic cement uh, is what most people are familiar with today uh, and that essentially means that it's gaining strength uh, and can gain strength in the presence of water. Non-hydraulic cement, although both forms still need water for that initial reaction, uh, actually reacts and gains strength through carbonation and that's where it's gaining strength and reacting with the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. All right, so Brett, we, we just talked about the two broad categories of it. And I know, you know, like I said, cement's been around for several thousand years, but what was the first known use of cement? And which of the two categories was it? Uh, so yeah, uh, non-hydraulic cement has been around for uh, thousands of years. The first archeological discovery was in Egypt about 10,000 to 12,000 BC. Uh, they would use calcined gypsum or calcined limestone um, as their cement. Uh, this requires, you know, a lot of time for it to gain strength. It's not as uh, strong as uh, hydraulic cement. And the first actual hydraulic cement uh, was attributed to the Romans during about 70 AD. Uh, they, they used lime mixed with volcanic ash uh, from Mount Vesuvius near Pazuli, Italy, which is where you get the term uh, pozzolans from. And similar to what we use today is, as far as fly ash and slag. So they were able to make structures that are still standing today with that cement, combining it with uh, sand, rock, and rubble uh, to make their structures, such as the Colosseum and Pantheon and aqueducts to transfer water. So some of their structures were actually able to uh, hydrate and set underwater. So once we got through the, the Romans and, and their hydraulic, I know that we kind of felt like we took a step back in, in cement revolution and, and moving forward with it. So what, what happened next with it? Yeah, so they actually, after the fall of the Roman Empire, about 400 AD, uh, they really did take a step back in uh, cement technology and general building skills. Uh, most of the mortars they used hardened by carbonation, uh, similar to what the, they've been doing thousands of years before. Um, and it wasn't until about 1759 when a British engineer named John Smeaton found that a mixture of limestone, clay, and crushed slag from a byproduct from iron making uh, actually could hydrate underwater. Um, so that was one of the first modern hydraulic cements. Um, and then a guy named Joseph Aston, which few people are very familiar with, he's attributed to uh, today's Portland cement, or at least being the father of it. He took um, Smeaton's invention and improved upon it. Uh, so he used similar materials and ground them very fine and cooked them at a little bit higher temperatures and patent that as Portland cement. Then uh, further along in 1824, um, there was a guy named Isaac Johnson that uh, do, used similar materials as well, but cooked them at much higher temperatures, closer to what we use today, uh, close to 7, 2700, 2800 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. At these temperatures, you get clinkering. So minerals are formed that are very, very reactive. Um, and you know, since Smeaton and since Aspen and, uh, and Johnson, Johnson's uh, temperatures and materials are very similar to what we use today, but there's three main uh, key developments that we that modernized cement manufacturing today. And the first one is uh, rotary kilns. Rotary kilns, they are able to heat much higher temperatures, uh, which produces more consistent clinker. Uh, the use of ball mills, uh, this allows you to they use this for grinding uh, raw materials and clinker and, uh, and the use of gypsum. So they combine gypsum, which helps control the set time 
Uh, they add this process during the use in, uh, in the ball mills. Brett, I appreciate it. I know that gives us a little look into the history of cement. It's not a full blown uh, expose on it, so to speak, but it's just a little teaser and appetizer to kind of whet that appetite to get you wanting more for it. Uh, Brett, because you do have that manufacturing work experience, I know you aren't really working in the manufacturing plant, but you know a lot more than what I do anyway. Would you be willing to do another video with us that talks about the cement manufacturing and what that entails? Absolutely, I'd be glad to. Guys, if you don't mind, stay tuned because we'll bring another video talking about the manufacturing cement, that wonderful binder that makes concrete the great thing that it is. Thank you.